welcome to episode 11 of uh, Young Blood Podcast, guys. I can't believe we made it this far. It's been an interesting journey. So tonight we had two episodes. This is the first time. Excuse me. Let me fix my cameras here. This is the first time I've ever had two episodes in a day. So this is kind of an interesting ordeal. Um, I had Clay come over today. We recorded an awesome podcast. And it was, it was a uh, podcast I've been anticipating for over a couple months now, actually, since I started out. I've been doing this for a bit. And Clay was like one of the number one people that I sought out to have on the show. Um, he's got amazing stories. He's also got multiple other podcast experiences. He's, he's been on a few other shows, not just mine, other people's Tales from the Road. Um, but we're going to start this out with this podcast being brought to you by Treasure Valley Barber Co. Treasure Valley Barber Co. is a fantastic company. Treasure Valley Barber Co. is actually somebody who's I, I've affiliated with for a few years now. I did their flooring way back when and ever since then i have gone there religiously it is not based on the cheapest haircut in town so don't don't go there looking for a fucking deal you're gonna get a goddamn good haircut guys go straight there talk to nick tell him i sent you he will fucking take good care of you treasure valley barbaco and right now they're closed so what we got to do guys to support local companies is they are offering awesome swag they have these super great old school windbreakers they're awesome they say fucking treasure valley barbaco on it Check them out. Do what you can to support local, guys. Please and thank you. Again, and we have a clothing company that is not just stylish, guys, but eco-friendly. A clothing company that is here based out of Boise, of course, the whole premise of this podcast, guys. It's based out of Boise for Boise locals. With this clothing company, guys, you can stay stylish and be eco-friendly and use the code. Hold on, let me pull it up here for you. Use the code. A good friend of mine, Colby Waddell. Uh, he was on the episode, I think, six of the podcast. Uh, he was the one who helped me endorse this. He's a big advocate for this cl- clothing company. He wears them himself. I wear them. Um, and it's Gem Mindset, guys. Gem Mindset Clothing is beautiful. Check out his Instagram, Colby Woodell. He was on the show. He's tagged in previous episodes. He's also a good-looking motherfucker. He models, does all that fucking shit. You know, yeah, good for him. Whatever. But yeah, check it out. He looks good in the shit. I look good in the shit. And guys, if you use code ECLOTHING18, you get 10% off your order. 10%. What's that code again? ECLOTHING18, spelled E-C-L-O-T-H-I-N-G. ECLOTHING18. Like that fresh 18-year-old you just slept with. 18, guys. 18. Tonight, we have fucking Matt Shredder, the bartender, the man, the myth, the legend. Shredder, how are we doing today? How have you been? What's going on new for you? Oh, you know, just living my best quarantine life over here. Fuck, we all are, right? We all are. That's, uh, I, I've been looking forward to having you on the show for a while. Uh, start me off, where do you work, what do you do, and who are you, man? Well, I, uh, I run the bar program over at Brickyard Steakhouse downtown. I've been tending bar down there for about seven, eight years now. And uh, I like to get outside. I don't know. I do cool shit sometimes. Yeah, well, you're not working bars right now. Cheers, by the way. Oh, Thanks yeah, for coming sure. on. Oh, yeah happy to be here yeah so with you're not working you're not currently explaining what you're doing to me now you're gonna explain to me what you did before this all happened you, you worked for what company here in boise uh brickyard steakhouse that's down underneath the reef on sixth and main have oh, the best steaks food, in man. town you got like good food awesome down steaks. there yeah you know what i put on probably 10 pounds since i started working there <laughs> great food and employee discounts killer you know well tell me i fuck dude i know everything's closed down everything's crazy um, what is Brickyard doing right now, and what is the Reef doing? What are what are what are your restaurants doing to stay afloat? What do you what can we do to help you guys out? Well, you know we're still offering a, a takeout menu for everyone, and we've even uh, started offering cocktails to go. I mean, uh, <laughs> okay, got some legislation changed here in Idaho it means we're able to sell uh, cocktails or liquor uh, in sealed containers to go. That's huge, huge for the state. So you know, how how exactly? Explain to me, like, what, what sealed containers, how do you guys go about selling it to go cocktail? Uh, you know, the bartender that uh, back there mixes all up, uh, stirs it, shakes it, puts it in one of our to go containers, maybe a mason jar. Uh, it was so popular, we sold out of mason jars and went to little plastic go cups that are sealable. And they actually work great. They don't disintegrate. They don't, the top doesn't come off for like no reason whatsoever and send you on your way, you know? 
Um, you can call in, put in an order, show up 20 minutes later, get your food, get your cocktails. Where do you, where do you, put, where is this at? It's at uh, 6th and Main downtown, right? Yeah, 6th and Main. Uh, just walk into the brickyard and we'll get you taken care of. Man, it's, I'll tell you what, I, I before all this happened, Matt, I, I was a very avid downtown goer. Obviously, everybody who knows me knows that. I, I spent a lot of my time. Well, they call that alcoholism. Fuck off. Um, functioning alcoholism. Welcome to the Young Blood Podcast. We call it high functioning alcoholism. High functioning today, alcoholism. Because I'm right there with you. I mean, so I personally, like, I've, I've interviewed a lot of people on the show and I've talked to a lot of, um, other extroverts and people who really thrive on seeing the downtown scene. And are you spending any time downtown? Like when it's empty, you know, I've, I've been downtown a couple of times, pick up some food from my work, but other than that, no, I, I've been trying to avoid it. I've been taking this whole uh, social distancing thing very seriously. Um, you know, I think it's really important, but the times I did get downtown is fucking crazy, man. There's parking. You could park. Right in front of where you need to go. Yeah, huh? that, was, that was neat. That was the coolest part about it. Well, how often are they having you come down and make those, like, to-go cocktails, man? You know, I haven't been a uh, part of that uh, experience yet. I'm, I'm, they're, not I mean, they're, not, they're not busy enough. No, they, they're, <sighs> they're having some of their, uh, their upper management crew just jump behind the bar and, and handle that. Um, they really went down to a skeleton crew when this well, all hit. Like, at least the kitchen's open at least, right? You, yeah, you, I think you it's, like, get... one guy working the kitchen. In each restaurant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no dishwasher. Dude. Oh my no prep. god, bro. Oh my god, I just hit my head. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, we're going to take five here and fix uh, this really quick. That'll take me two seconds to fix it. Yeah, let me get you. Oh, I think this hurt. Anyways, so while I fix this, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you, dude. I got you. Technical difficulties here at the Youngblood studio, guys. Sorry, I knocked my mic down. I'm a fucking retard. Just Cri kidding. Crisis averted. Crisis averted. Matt Shredder helped me out there. Uh, we were talking about, you were here, how we're doing with the Brickyard and uh, how, what's going on with these to-go cocktails. I saw another place doing some really cool to-go cocktails, and that was the mode. Did you did you uh, see their fucking like, Instagram promotion <laughs> on that? I actually went down to the mode and dropped like 50 bucks on their cocktails. Uh, Tyler uh, Armstrong... The bar manager over there is a good buddy of mine and uh, shot him a text and had him whip up some cocktails for right me. On. It was pretty incredible, man. I mean, he did everything from including the ice and uh, big sphere <laughs> ice <laughs> and everything cool. and, and the garnish and everything and threw it in a bag together and was had a little instruction sheet on how to build your own cocktail, man. They're, they're, oh, they're doing dude. some real, okay, so. really cool shit over there. So. I mean, he, he gave me the rundown. He was like, all right, you know, you put the lemon peel in this one, and, you know, this one goes on the ice cube. Here's some crushed ice for your jungle bird. And I'm like, sick. It's jungle, really open. Jungle bird? Yeah, it's one of my favorite cocktails. Um, would you please explain to me what exactly is in a jungle bird? Uh, jungle bird's an old tiki cocktail. I think it, uh, don't quote me on this, but I think it dates back to the 50s here. Um, I don't have my fact checker available right now, but uh, it's a... It's yeah, a we're currently missing Camden Sutton, the man, the myth, the legend. He does a great job. And Kelsey did a great job stepping in for Clay's episode tonight. Check that out in a couple of weeks. We'll have a few clips from Clay's episode. Uh, it's going to be um, my fault. I fucked up. I didn't fit... <sighs> like 30 minutes of the podcast got fucking left out, guys. Wait, I mean... fucked up. It was it was really shitty. But the best part is Matt Schroeder showed up on the best time ever. He was already scheduled to come on the show, and he's been scheduled for a while. So this is actually the second podcast of the day, like I said earlier, which is a fucking new crazy thing to me. Shows this is growing. This is getting bigger. That's not what I'm here for. It's here for the fucking fun times, dude. This is every conversation I've had. Like, dude, I had Safe and Rondell over here last night. Holy fucking shit, dude. We did not two we did a two and a half hour podcast just cracking up the whole and fucking entire time, <laughs> sober as a bone, just fucking having yeah, a blast. Those guys are out of their fucking minds. Dude, they were the and I didn't I'm all like thinking Ron, like Rondell's just funny to have him on for like you know a good time you know and didn't realize that the guy's a fucking Boise State scholarship football player defensive end I was like oh I would love to have you on my show and then I didn't even realize that he was already on my show by the time I noticed I was like oh hey dude what's up <laughs> <laughs> that's great publicity thank you it's nice to have you you know and uh, no they, they run this movement called the Good Eats you know it's not, they don't run it but they're a part of this movement called the Good Eats and. It's, it was funny because I asked, I asked Safe, I was like, dude, what the fuck's up with your Instagram? Like, why are you saying uh, Good Eats in both of your guys' pages? Like, what's, what's, what's that all about? What does Good Eats mean? And they're like, 
they're trying to explain it and we're just like you know it's a movement man like we're just we all do this stuff it's it's, it's a good time you know just, just t- check it out search good eats on instagram you know and that was a, that was a really fun fucking show dude so i really encourage anybody who the, the two friends hayden midkiff one friend who listens to this podcast check it out check it out it's a good one and this one's gonna be just as good if not better because you know mr Sh- matt shredder that was not meant to be a rhyme anyways <laughs> you know, i'm still not entirely clear what good eats is in fact it's a it's, i mean i still i know it's a movement i just don't know what they're moving for i don't know what they're moving for either man i'll tell you like i fucking no one, I, does I, anyone I, I, know does anyone if anybody know? else wants to tell me what the good eats movement is and wants to come on the show i do mobile podcasts but you can fly out to boise it's like 100 bucks right now or it's like 10 dollars actually fuck. <laughs> <laughs> fuck shit it might be fuck no like well that's why clay and everybody went down to fucking arizona because they literally just were like, oh, yeah, I'm going to fly because in Airbnbs and everything is cheap. They went to go travel just to go have a good time. Oh, shit. All right. Oops. What do you do? What do you do? Yeah. So, Matt, you came into this with zero expectations whatsoever. And I really appreciate that, dude. Yeah, I mean, I just showed up to crack a beer with you. And what we were doing, I was in the middle of a fucking podcast with Clay Lyle and another buddy doing my audio. And yeah, we were just I mean, full, not... full, full, full production here at the Young Blood Studio, man. I feel like I mean it'll be fun. I mean, I got my groceries, my frozen food is thawing out in my car as we speak right now. Well, your whole entire life is in my garage. You might as well throw it in my freezer too. Yeah. <laughs> I, thought, I thought about going out to get some pizza rolls to bring in, but that was not the time. That was not the time. We're in the middle of a podcast, sir. We were talking actually about the mode and how phenomenal Tyler did for you and. How you should go check it out if you're one of these listeners on this podcast, one of three of you. Check <laughs> <laughs> check out fucking um, Treasure Valley Barber Co. again, dude. That guy has been friends of mine for years. He always takes care of my hair, and I really wish he could do it right now. How are you doing without having haircuts, Matt? Hey, man, I'm trying to grow out my hair anyway, so it's working just fine for me. I literally haven't shaved since this thing began. What's the haircut you're going for? Dude, you got to get that flow, man. The flow yeah, is the, the haircut. Flow. Is that the haircut you're going for? The flow? <laughs> no, fuck no! I'm just trying to grow out my hair as long as I can. I don't give a shit anymore. Do you want to know what I'm going? Do you Wait. want to know what I'm going for? Magnum PI, I think is what. Magnum PI with, with a mullet. Oh yeah, dude, get it. Mullets are coming back, man. Dude, I'm telling you, I have honestly fucking rocked the mullet. For you a know long what? Time. You know what? I I did too. But did you get a mullet? Holy oh, fuck, Matt! When did you do a mullet? I had a mullet in middle school because. I wanted to grow my hair out, but my mom said the only way you can grow your hair out is if you keep it short in the front. And me, being a young, impressionable, and, you know, slightly sheltered child, went along with it. I thought it was a great fucking compromise, and so I did. And I should note that I was in private school at that point in my life. Right. And uh, I was the cool kid in private school. And coming out of the sixth grade, going into seventh, I moved over to a public school. And I had no idea. That's an interesting transition. Yeah, at that at that point in my life, that my mom had set me up for failure. <laughs> I like the California kid moving from Idaho. Uh, yeah, well, I had quite, to Idaho. I was known as Mullet Man for at oh, least shit, four dude. years. Oh my god. Yeah, and I didn't. My really know persona anything. was different. Like I got the mullet because I was like, okay, fuck this, I want a mullet. Okay. You know, and I was fucking 18, 19 years old, and then I moved back to California and was like, you know what, I'm going to keep this mullet. I moved from Idaho. Yeah. And then I rocked the mullet continuously until I came back from Idaho, or to Idaho, after living in California for a fucking year, and then was like, you know what, I'm going to keep this mullet. Yeah, you know. I like this mullet. And, you know, I think right now, I currently have never rocked a mustache like this in my entire fucking life, and I was like, fuck it. Until you met me. (laughs) The mustache (laughs) man, Mr. Shredder. Now it's just scruff. Mr. Shredder, did you ever imagine seeing me with a Magnum P.I. mustache? You know, I honestly never, I dreaded it. <laughs> <laughs> I tried not to imagine it. Do you like it? Uh, Just hand me another you know, you know, it's okay. It's okay. Is it okay? Wait, 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 wait. wait. You know, it is growing on me. It's growing on a lot of things. Well, it's growing on me. <laughs> it's growing on me, especially. <laughs> So, man, you've been doing a lot of fucking disc golf, and today I'm really appreciative because you actually hit me. Um, did you actually grab me a beer? Did you? No, I thought you just just found your other one that you lost. No, I had like three sips left. Oh, okay. Well, you know. Welcome to, the, welcome to Young Blood Podcast, ladies and gentlemen, where we like to not drink beer. This is a rough draft. Oh, we're live, dude. You're going. It's rough right. and final. This is rough. And, I do one. 
fucking run, ladies and gentlemen. See, Matt Shredder's on the camera now. Yeah, I'm on the camera again. Matt Shredder's there now, too. You see I'm fucking cool at that? No, no. Wow. Holy you, shit. You have no idea. He's pressing one button on his How keyboard. How fucking long that took me to figure out, guys. That explains a lot, actually. Dude, honestly, you can fuck off. Like, I have spent... This is, like, the 30th or 40th episode that I've recorded. Not all of them have made it online and shit, but I've, like, dude, I've really put a lot of fucking shit into this. Well, I can tell by your tabletop setup here. Hey, you, man, next best goal is to get this the fuck out of my house, but that's going to be a while away until I start well, making you know, good money on the podcast. Oh, yeah, we're going to make that YouTube that YouTube podcast money. Dude, yeah, right. That's never, that's <laughs> never going to I'm not here to make money. That's the thing. I'm here to fucking... I have, dude, would you be here still? You'd probably be like, I'm going to go. No, fuck you. You're on a podcast now. You can't go. I mean, I don't have a choice now. No, nope, you're fucking sucked in. Now. now you are immersed in an hour long, or whatever hour, 10 minute, whatever, long conversation with me. Fuck, man. I'm hungry. You're going to have to order some Kelsey. pizza. Kelsey. <laughs> <laughs> um, you need me to order some pizza or some shit? No, nah, it's chill, dude. I'm Kelsey's just the man, dude. No, it's, all, it. it's all good, homie. I can eat. Well, he's complaining. Are you hungry too, Kels? I haven't eaten yet today. All right, fuck. I ordered pizza, baby. Kelsey, Kels, the man, Kelsey Keck, right, who's been on. He was on two episodes ago, and he's going to be here. He's going to be around for quite a few episodes because you know why? When people see this podcast, when they listen to it, they've wanted to be a part. I have a fucking waiting list to come on. When I started it out with just calling people all that I knew, like, hey, dude, talk to me for on the phone for an hour. I'll record it. Don't worry about Just, Just have a good conversation with me. Like, let's talk. You know, and that's that's what this started out as. I, it started out with literally just talking to my friends through the coronavirus, talking to my th- friends through their fucking pandemic, t- seeing how they're doing, seeing how they're feeling. And that, to me, is a fucking fantastic reason to keep this going, to keep doing what I'm doing here, and to really feel passionate about it because I, I, I genuinely, I hate to say this, don't give a fuck about you, the viewers. It's about this experience. Like it's, I'm not here for viewers. I'm not here to make money. I've spent more money than I've made on this podcast. I'm not here to do that. You know, and it, it's just really, like, it's important to me, the conversations I've had with my friends. And this is fucking episode 10 or 11, and I've been in quarantine with nobody but my dog and shit, you know? So it's nice to have people do these conversations and to sit down. And, and if you guys enjoy that, too, that's what makes this shit even fucking better. Because, you know, all of us are fucking sitting here at quarantine or just really tired of talking about COVID-19, experiencing COVID-19, being... Living this COVID-19 shit, which Matt Shredder's just been doing nothing but playing fucking disc golf over there, but that's fine. Hey, man, it's easy to social distance out there at the park. <laughs> Good for you. you. Thank you for Barbecue doing your part. Barbecue chicken or pepperoni? Pepperoni. Uh, yeah, yeah, Barbecue yeah, chicken. So, yeah, oh, that's the one. I got 20 bucks for you. Oh, fucking 20 of your bucks. <laughs> I wish you would. Oh, You're man. a guest on this show, my friend. Welcome to the Young Blood Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. We are sponsored by Boise Treasure Valley Barber Co. Sorry, not Boise. Boise does not sponsor this. Fuck. Oops. Treasure Valley Barber Co., ladies and gentlemen. It really does a lot for you. It does a lot for me. Thank you for listening to the Young Blood Podcast. No, the, just kidding, Young Blood Podcast, Y O U N G B L O O D P O D C A S T Podcast, guys. Young Blood Podcast. We are on YouTube, Apple, Spotify. Fucking, it's taken a lot of work to get on all these platforms. It's taken a lot of effort. And thank God I wasn't working at the time because you know what? I had the time to do it. And now that I'm working again, I don't have time to do all that stuff. I just barely have time to do the recording. And I have awesome friends like Kelsey Keck over there who spend the time on this show to help me out. Come over here on their free fucking time, on their dollar, just to fucking help me do the editing and stuff. Because they feel they, they believe in this too. They think this is something that, that, that is awesome. I have had multiple people hit me up. I have I have messages filled on Facebook from my friends who want to come on the show or even messaging me saying, hey, dude, I've seen your fucking shit, and I enjoy what you're doing, and I think it's fucking cool. And you guys are heard, and you guys are awesome, and thank you so much for being a part of this. It's really important to me, and if it's important to you too, then fucking I'm going to keep on doing it. And if it's not important to you, I'm still going to keep on doing it. And Matt Shredder, is it important to you? I don't fucking care. I'm going to still keep on doing it. So thanks for coming on. Yeah. Thanks, <laughs> thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here, my friend, and I am going to take the second to try and quietly open this beer here. I don't know. Oh, you, know, you barely hit any yeah, redness. No, whatever. You, no, was... you didn't even hit the red. You, you weren't even in decibel. You didn't no, as, long decibel. As, as long as it didn't clip anything when I was doing that. And knock over the screen <clears throat> like I did. Yeah, man. You know, I'm an amateur here. So, but... so another thing I kind of wanted to talk about, dude, like, I, I, I had posted out something on my face or my Instagram or whatever then um, looking for a videographer to take over the video portion of this podcast because it's, it's, it's a lot of fucking work just doing – I can talk. I can do that. I can do the posting. But between editing, talking, literally every every show that I have, I plan on things to talk about. I, I plan these with these people. Like with – I did – 
this months ago though when i first wanted to talk to matt i was like i want to talk about bartending that was the main thing i wanted to bring you on about i wanted to bring up bartending do a bartending podcast tell me about some of your favorite cocktails things like that and that's what this is about because it's not about my show it's about the fucking conversation we're gonna have and i know you can have a good fucking input with that um that being said uh guys mp shredder on instagram the fucking man the legend the myth tell me your favorite cocktail and how do you make it and go from there baby Oh, man. Well, you know, earlier we, we were talking about the Jungle Bird here. That is probably one of my go-to cocktails I like. It's bitter. It's sweet. It's, uh, it's refreshing. It's a good summer day cocktail. Summer day, baby. Yeah. It's got uh, it's got aged rum, lime juice, pineapple juice. and What's, can... your, what's the aged rum of choice? I'm partial to Florida Cana. Um, let's see. Sometimes I'll go with Smith & Cross. Okay. Uh, Go for a really big one, or uh, you know, maybe even El Dorado four year, you know. Right. Uh, but Kirk and Sweeney is probably my favorite <laughs> sipping rum. They have, right. they have an 18 year age rum that I absolutely love, and uh, I'll hook that up every now and then if right. I've got a couple extra bucks in my pocket. Um, take the Jungle Bird, start off with the age rum, add pineapple juice, a little bit of lime juice. Uh, some simple syrup and uh, Campari, which is an Italian bitter kind of t- Ooh, kind of tastes hey. a bit like grapefruit. I just you know it's bit. really good Campari and peach uh, peach fucking snapple man. Campari <laughs> and peach snapple or uh, peach snapple and <laughs> hate to cut you off for a second. No, dude, that um, sounds fucking dope. Listen, actually, for, like, dude, no, you know how like they, the it. tricks where they do fucking like a uh, p- pickle juice or any fucking chaser. Yeah, dude, I was told this by a friend of mine from Salt Lake City. His name's fucking um, Jake. Jake. Uh, I love you. Can't remember your last name. TBI. Sorry. Brain crash. Fuck you. Love you. Anyways, that being said, he told me the craziest thing about peach fucking Snapple that no matter what liquor you're drinking, tequila, whiskey, fucking anything, it, it's a great um, flavor eradicator. Like it just fucking like pickle juice. It just right, completely right. clears the palate the second you yeah, take the shot. Right. And so he told me about this and I was like, all right, cool. Whatever. And it was me with my girlfriend at the time. We were both bartenders. We we're like, okay, fuck you, dude. We're going to test this out. Dude, holy fuck. This was the most intense fucking, like, shock. We're like, dude, whoa! Whoa! We fucking chased it with tequila. <laughs> I mixed it with Jameson. And then there was Campari. Oof. Oh, Campari and fucking peach Snapple, ladies and germs. To keep Matt back on what he was talking about. I had to throw oh, that in. Damn. Didn't mean to interject. No, I got I, I to gotta get, get up on that. <laughs> it's I mean, so good, that sounds, dude. Sounds it's decent. so fucking good, man. Yeah, all right. Well, you know, next time I go to the liquor store, I'm going straight to Albertsons to pick up a bottle of peach Snapple here. Uh, dude, please do. And I'm, yeah. dude, I'm, I'm so happy you finally got to make it on this show. I'm so happy, fucking, this is working out. I'm <laughs> I fucked up so bad in the last show, and just <laughs> didn't. I don't know if I didn't hit record or me and Kelsey we were trying, and like I think because between like trying to mix with the cameras and working on the recording, and I also figured out the Windows game mode fucks you when you're trying to broadcast. Figure that <laughs> out. Any of you who need a good hint or a tip if you're trying to do what I'm doing, and you're using a laptop that's PC. Go into Windows game mode, turn it the fuck off, because it'll fuck everything up. You know what? I just updated to Windows 10. They have that game mode deal. It's bullshit. Yeah, I, fucking, you know, I can't I, believe it. I, I, dude, I've recorded 30 episodes of podcasts with choppy videos just to find out that turning off one setting is going to make fucking my shit work again. Yeah, get off that game mode, friends. I, bleh, what? You're probably not a professional Twitch streamer. You don't need game fuck, mode. Fuck. I'm not a professional in anything other than <laughs> laying rocks. I can fuck it. I'm a mason. He puts rocks on the ground in a pattern. <laughs> I do tile. I'm a mason. That's the only professional. I don't know. I bartend, but I'm not a professional. You're speaking of back to that. One thing I can say, Matt Shredder, like I've been bartending not nearly as many years or time as you have. And like, I've known you as long as I've been bartending almost. And one thing I can definitely give you so much credit for dude is fucking, I've known you as the mixologist. Like you are, there's, there, you're not going to give yourself credit for this. I know because you're fucking modest, but dude, you are the most phenomenal mixologist that I have had the opportunity to run into as a, as a fucking nightclub bartender, as somebody who's been at a, a minimal amount of cock, like craft cocktail lounges. Like I've, I've been around, I've, I've bartended, I've done my fair share, but I've always seen this guy making his own fucking literally, um, why is the, we're blanking out for me. Bitters. He makes his own bitters. He makes his own fucking tonics. He he literally is the fucking man. And I've always seen him as that since I was like 21. I'm 25 now, guys. Has it been that long? Yeah, I've known you since I was 21, <laughs> no dog. Oh, shit. 
I've known you since I was 21, man. And I, I have honestly, in every way, shape, and form, had so much respect for you, what you do behind the bar, your craft. You, you, you have passion about it. Don't call it alcoholism. Call it love, bro. You love what the fuck you do. You love making drinks. You always have. I see it in your eyes. When you pour a fucking drink, dude, it's, just, it's, just, it's an art. It's not about the fucking alcohol. You fucking love it, dude. And I, I respect that a lot, man. Well, you know, man, it, it's addictive. And I, I, I think that there are just so many different styles of bartenders. And there are um, people that excel at each, each different type. I mean, I'm, I've been blessed enough to have had the opportunity to explore the craft cocktail side of bartending. Um, I've done it all. I've, I've been a nightclub bartender. I've been a dive bar bartender. Um, <laughs> you know, I've, yeah. I've, I've worked in every kind of bar, you know, I even worked for corporate bars for a little while. Um, You're a bar trainer, bar manager, you've been all, you've been fucking around the block, man. Yeah. I mean, I've seen it all, but you know, I, I, what I, what I do have to say is that there are people that excel at every different type of bartending craft. And, uh, I, I hate the word mixologist. I really do. Um, it doesn't, <laughs> it, it, it really is a pet peeve of mine. I don't, I do not like that word. Um, so well, you're a good mixologist. Fuck off. If you think it's not a good word, <laughs> well, but I, I met you as the mix to be fair. I met you as the mixologist at Amsterdam. Well, that's the time when I first <laughs> fucking met you. That's G. what they tried to call me over but there. But that's what, no, but well, fuck me for calling you a mixologist. Well, no, when you like were hired as the mixologist for the company and they fucking, I'm not long story short. You weren't no, anyways. I, mean, no, I was, was, I heard great. that that's what you were called. So that's great. why no, I did. A, I, that, that job actually helped, uh, help bring me up to the level I'm at today. I mean, I, I taught a course and wrote a, wrote a course for, uh, beginner bartenders and, tried to cover a bunch of uh, different topics and y you know the best way to learn is to teach someone something right. you know? dude I, that I goes with everything yeah yeah and it, you know if you're forced to teach it to someone you have to kind of take a step back and uh, slow the fuck down yeah and evaluate it and so teaching that class like really opened up my eyes to a lot of different uh, s subjects and topics that I didn't really care about before or know about like right. like vodka i don't really <laughs> give a fuck about vodka <laughs> but you need to know about it yeah yeah and then so now i now i know how vodka is made what like the different distillation like you know how smirnoff says like 10 times distilled or something like platy 7x seven times yeah. distilled you know what, like, that, what that means you know, like what now, that mean? I, now i understand it you no, know? what does that mean then uh, it just means it's it's been run through the still that many times okay. and, and now so dude no seriously like dumb yeah. it down so people don't fucking know like well, I, mean, I have a lot of friends at least a couple friends of that are just alcoholics <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> they don't bartend though so dude 10 times distilled to them they're like what does that what does that actually entail well so when you when you distill a spirit basically um dumb it down alcohol boils at a lower temperature than water so alcohol turns into vapor at a lower temperature so what they'll do is they'll take the uh they'll basically take a beer that is the result of fermenting um grains or, or anything with sugar in it you take a they call it distiller's beer and you take that and you put it in a column still or a st just or a pot still whatever kind of still you happen to have and you heat it up and as it heats up the alcohol boils out of the water and turns to vapor at a lower temperature than water so the alcohol rises up to the top then you catch the alcohol in a condenser coil which turns it back from vapor into liquid and in vodka they'll do that process like four to ten times over and over again to try and get and is it the a, same still for like whiskey to, like they don't do they still tequila uh yeah so is it all still it's all still it's all distillation yeah so every every uh spirit begins that process now um gin which everyone knows has like a very unique um pine yeah <laughs> piney, piney, the, the juniper piney. Spirit. <laughs> so during the distillation process they they put uh baskets in the still right. and so the vapor uh, that's coming out will rise up and uh, heat at a very high temperature and hit these botanicals and uh, take on some of the flavors and properties of these botanicals and uh, that's that's how they flavor gin right um, now uh, flavored vodkas are not the same way uh, some of them do a process kind of like that but a lot of a lot of uh, vodka will uh, add flavors afterward right. too um, now, like soaking jalapenos or peppers. In oh, the, yeah, just infusing it. Like, yeah. Or they'll just uh, – I've been to a distillery where they just take a bunch of uh, wild berries and throw it into a bin with all the <laughs> vodka when it's done, let it sit. Or hemp. Hemp's, hemp's a popular thing they've been throwing into shit. Or hemp wine. Hemp wine. Hemp I, wine. I can't, can't say I tried it. Not I'm actually not. hemp, but actually like they put full-on like, full flower buds, like the full-on nine oh. yards into wine. 
Huh. Uh, and this is in California, obviously, where yeah. it's legal. We don't smoke weed in Idaho or on this podcast or yeah. endorse it. Yeah, man, the way um, the country's going, we could see alcoholic uh, <laughs> THC infused beverages. There is um, that would be well. Actually, insane. have you seen? There's a show called Bong Appetit. Uh, it's on Netflix, Hulu, all those great fucking platforms. Yeah, you know, I have Bong heard of it. Yeah, so it's it's phenomenal. It's a great show. So, and, they, and they talk about uh, there's a, they feature a, a winery in California that makes hemp wine, and it's fucking. I want to try it so bad. I don't know the name. I can't fucking. I'm not gonna research it. I'm not gonna look it up for you. Go mm. check it out. Oh, fucking. Fuck it. Let's Google it. Let's I don't out. have Camden here. Camden knows how to do all that. No, dude, let's check the Googles here. You know, uh, I, can, Kelsey's, I can talk and type right now. Kelsey's the man, and he's a. Uh, been helping me out and everything, but he's also helped with one podcast already today. I'm not going to make him sit here and slave away on two. <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. See, see, guys, you know how much work goes long into this podcast. Yeah, this long work day goes, pressing buttons. Eh? I don't, I, like I said, guys, I don't do this because I want to make money. I'm not making money on this. Don't fucking think I am. It's literally strictly for and because of the fact that I have fun doing it. I yeah, have a lot of friends. You know, it's cool to get out and like actually like socialize and have a real conversation with someone. I mean, that means a lot. Like it as, as far as this quarantine goes, man, like everyone feels isolated and um, a lot of people are kind of turning into like themselves. I mean, I'm I tend bar and like I have to talk to a lot of people and be social, but I'm a more or less of an introvert like right. at heart. You but know, when you're I, forced to be an introvert, you miss being forced not to be. Well, it, I guess that's true, but I mean, when yeah, I... Yeah, you know, it's, it's very true. Like, you're forced to all the time go to work, be a bartender, and experience your non- yeah, extrovert well, I mean, I tendencies be, and because yeah. now you have to be an extrovert you're like fuck i miss bartending well, and like that's how it goes with everybody I, mean, here. I think i think that um the difference between extrovert being being an introvert and being uh isolated you know is very different i mean even introverts right. need that kind of social interaction and everything and so now that uh this quarantine has happened i've been i've been pretty much i, I spent most of it in a uh studio apartment uh with another person and mm-hmm. uh, no. you know we that that whole social thing i mean it it's it's tough if you don't have that interaction and so like being able to come and have a, a at length conversation you know in depth conversation with someone is really mm. it's been good i mean this is this is nice i mean this is probably the best thing that uh, quarantine has given us so far um th- that's one thing i can agree with you 100% on because i was intending on starting this podcast i was like oh my god i'm gonna start a podcast i'm on no if it wasn't for covid-19 i wouldn't have started it yet if I if I wasn't forced to sit at home and not go to work, because the crazy thing is, guys, well, listen, I was already at the point of not being able to go to work before the COVID nineteen hit. I was I broke I had broken in the L two vertebrae in my spine. I fractured it, and I had major muscle damage behind that. I had ten staples in my head, so I was recovering from TBI. I was already sitting on my ass for a month before this, and the crazy thing is, the I I, I didn't see that as an opportunity to be like, well, I'm sitting on my ass for a month. I should start a podcast. I saw COVID-19 as a, I really am sitting on my ass for a month. I need to start a fucking podcast. I'm going to start that podcast that I had intended on starting. And it was, it was bullshit me saying the fact I'm going to start a podcast. I would make that a fucking topic of conversation. Who fucking cares? Who fucking cares? Oh, cool. You're going to start a podcast. What's it going to be called? I don't fucking know. Who fucking cares? Why am I telling people that? Now I get to tell people I have a podcast, young blood podcast, you might even fucking listen to it. The other day, I had a friend telling me, I want to come on your show. I want to fucking do this. Like, And he, he has spent hours and hours of research because he has fucking clients that he works for. And he's a professional that he cannot come on my show and show himself in a certain way that is not in a way that he predicts pre- – makes himself at work he cannot change that persona he has to be respectable he has to be nice and he asked me to do a pg-13 episode i was like you know what dude well and the way i took it i took it as like i can't endorse myself on your show unless it's pg-13 so i took him as saying hey i don't want to come on your show because it's not pg-13 no he was like i know your show i've watched it i like it a lot i fucking love your show and i was like well i wasn't expecting that answer like that hit me that hit me well i was like oh shit and he's like that's why i want to endure i want to put your name behind me on this show i want to come on your show but if you could agree to like do a pg-13 episode with me i'll send my clients that episode and i'll feel okay with being on it and i was like dude that sounds amazing and he's also an endorser for paint the town guys paint the town boise that's a fucking charity out here that he donates his time every single year and he's a professional contractor just like myself 
your time is worth a lot of fucking money, guys. When you own your own business and you're a contractor and you you have employees and you do construction for a living, you you are worth over $75 an hour, period, without a doubt. This guy donates his time like that every year to this charity called Paint the Town where he just takes care of somebody's house and just revamps it and does it for free and just, just does it for the people. His name is Rex, Tedes- Rex Tedeschi Jr. He is the man, the myth, the legend, in the words of Chloe Lyle, I'm going to steal those words from him because they work very well on this show. But yeah, he came to me and he talked to me about that, dude. He was like, fuck, bro, like, I watch your show. It's pretty cool, man. It's got to be a good feeling. Oh, dude, it felt so good. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. It, I mean, somebody wants to listen to you talk. For what the hour hour fuck are they oh, thinking, dude. man? Like, yeah. I am an idiot. I'm a fucking idiot who just likes to talk and who has audio gear and who has figured out how to make a podcast. And you guys might like listening to that. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I think. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I'm sorry you enjoy this, and I hope you do. And I'm, I'm thank you for it. But fuck, fuck, shit. Kelsey enjoys just hanging out at my house because we do this podcast here. This podcast has made impact on people minutely. And on Safe's episode and Rondell's episode the other day, they literally said to me, "They're like, there's somebody out here who thinks this is dope." Yeah, somebody. I was like, "Fuck, you're right." And he's like, "Keep doing what you're doing." There's one, don't don't because there's one fucking person you don't know who thinks this is dope. Do it for that one dude. Yeah. Do it for that one fucking person. And I was like, "You motherfucker, that is such solid logic." Yeah. I'd have never ever thought about it that way because like I've gone this far, I've moved this point from little to nothing. I started in my parents fucking upstairs garage because i didn't want to live at my house alone on quarantine yeah, i have my own apartment so i dude, this is my out of my parents fucking attic dude like bored now i have a full studio in my house where i'm just fucking inviting people over as much as i can with this quarantine just to come over and enjoy a solid conversation a solid experience and to really talk about some things that i care about like matt shredder and his fucking bartending you know i don't know what, what else do we want to talk about <laughs> i mean like we talked about spirits and everything I'm I'm down to talk about whatever. You're down to talk about whatever. And then you came on the show with zero expectations, man. And then Kelsey came on the show with zero expectations. And both of you, I I could see it in your eyes. He's already came to me and talked to me about it. And he he physically said, "Thank you for this, dude. Like this is fucking great. This is you're on live air right now. This is recorded. This is gonna be on Spotify. This is gonna be on YouTube. Your vo- your voice is gonna be be heard by maybe." Whatever, one person, but fuck, dude, your voice is going to be fucking hurt. You know what I mean? There are dozens of us. There might be one or two of you, but fuck yes, thank you. And that being said, Matt Shredder, like, dude, what else do you have to say about what you love to do, man? I don't know, man. I I got addicted to it, not just the alcohol, but the the lifestyle, (laughs) man. I mean, there's something, it's... I guess it's it's why people like cooking, you know, and and, uh, sharing that. It's, 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 at its heart, it's a kind of art. You know, right. and being able to share that with other people when you when you make a cocktail, like I said, bartending, yeah, fucking like, art, and just yeah. like cooking. But you, you you come up with a cocktail, something that uh, was your idea, and giving sharing that with someone. What's is your best really cocktail such... you've made? <laughs> oh man, that that you have came up with that is on menu right now. Somewhere. My favorite one. You've had multiple cocktails on multiple yeah, menus, I, in multiple places. Man. I tend to multiple. I tend to build cocktails according to my palate. Um, and, uh, are we doing sign language over here? I am sorry, actually I fluent. Like, Fun fact. Like, so I am fluent in American sign language. So fuck you. Now I know. All right. That is, that is new. Better switch the camera first. We don't endorse anything like that. Hey, that, your words, not mine. What did I say? Fuck you. I'm no, no. Me. You said you don't, ex- we don't endorse that. What? Smoking tobacco? Yeah, totally. That's exactly. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We smoked tobacco on the Young Blood podcast. Okay, perfect. I fucking have a terrible habit. Oh, God. Shit. I need to just quit smoking. It's bad. <laughs> what, what did you think? We, were we are live in Ontario, Oregon right now, right, guys? For what? Smoking a cigarette? <laughs> All right. Um, shit. Ontario, Oregon is a great place, guys. Go there for Hot Box Farms. It's a super sweet spot. Anyways, Matt Schroeder was talking about his favorite uh, cocktail uh, on menu. Oh, God. It, not on like, menu. On menu guys. right now? I have like, Not right now. On menu ever. If it's ever, yeah, been, on okay, me- if yeah. it's ever been on a menu in any of the bars, like Whiskey Bar, yeah. like fuck, yeah, uh, sure. uh, Mai this Tai. Is, this one's been on any, two menus. Any of your, fuck, your absolute favorite. All right. Absolute favorite. I did this cocktail once with uh, aged rum and mezcal. Uh, 
Yum. And I... Can you explain what Mezcal is for me real quick? So Mezcal, you know, dumbed down is, is basically... Um, Barrel. It's let me let me tell you my stupid version and you give me the. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. I am by but but keep in mind I am by no means an expert on mezcal compared or tequila. To me, here, compared, so. compared to me, ladies I'm a whiskey. Gentlemen. I'm a whiskey guy. But you know what? Through. Your description. Well, I worked at a tequila, but it doesn't mean I know more about mezcal than you do. Sure. Um, I'm saying this based on just what I've heard. Mezcal is basically kind of like a, to me. I feel like it's a whiskey feel of a tequila. Like you think about it's barrel aged, right? And it's, so, so yeah, yeah. That's what I well, my thinking of it. Yeah, now tequila. I told you. Let me give you my yeah, dumb yeah. down. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, no, that's yeah. that's that's fine. Um, yeah. I think mezcal is okay. Layman's terms, best way to describe it. Mezcal is to tequila what scotch is to whiskey. As okay. far so scotch is to scotch. Or to scotch it, whiskey is to whiskey. Now, that's only true in the way it tastes. Now, right. um, truth be told, um, tequila is a mezcal. Tequila is actually a specialization of mezcal, but um, yeah. Now, uh, it's kind of a smokier. Uh, yeah, it's slightly... like, yeah, it's got a barrel fucking scotch whiskey smoke. Uh, well, the smoke, like... the smoke just comes from the way that they they. How uh, did they do it then? They cook the Again, pino. dumbed down version. Okay, so tequila is made from agave plants. Okay. The heart of the agave. I'm called... trying to sound like no, no, the devil's no, 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 advocate. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. It's so good, people like good. not like us yeah, who fucking good. don't bartend for a living. Because dude, I have a few friends that I know that listen to this podcast who just like to drink and like my show. Sure. At least one. Hey, yeah. Midkiff, I call you out on every episode. I love you. Um. So <laughs> for him, <laughs> explain to me. Well, so I mean, I'm gonna make that a thing, and he's gonna yeah, be called out on right. every fucking episode. So tequila being so popular, everybody love loves tequila, and. uh some people hate it. You know, that's fine. That's fine. Whatever. Uh, I personally love tequila. Um, tequila is a spirit that is made in the tequila. Um, okay, never mind. Hold on. So, <laughs> so I am. I am. Probably, I probably got like sunstroke today or something. I was outside. Um, like, okay, you've been yeah, yeah, disc yeah, golfing no. for weeks, and it's the yeah, first whatever. day you get sunstroke. Uh huh. Yep. Yeah. Uh, no. So tequila is made from the the heart of the agave plant called okay. pina, and uh, the way that they run the fermentation process basically you have to get uh sugars more present in whatever you're distilling uh it makes it easier to get that uh um, fermentation process started right. so they will cook the hearts of the pina um and heat it up to get it uh to get those sugars out and make it right. easier to get the distillation or fermentation right. process started and with mezcal those pinas can be smoked uh okay. so so heated up over a fire and so they take on that smoky flavor right um now some places will use a clay oven to cook those in so they're, they're not receiving any smoke like direct smoke so okay. they'll they'll put it in an oven so it's just a very pure heat um so so that's where the smokiness comes from um but mezcal is a very broad term of liquor distilled from Pinas, uh, whereas tequila has to come from a very specific region or state of Mexico. Right. Yeah. Okay. So so, any, so anyway, back to that cocktail. I did I did an aged rum, uh, and a mezcal to give it a little bit of a smoky sweet flavor, and a uh, an infusion of simple syrup with fennel in it, um, which I ended up substituting out an absinthe rinse to give it kind of a an anise uh, component to it, uh, a little bit of an anise flavor. And I finished it with uh, cane sugar syrup and a few dashes of orange bitters to try and brighten it up just a little bit. Um, it's a slow sipper for sure, but it's probably my favorite, personal favorite cocktail that I've ever come up with. Uh, it's not for everyone because a lot of people do not like that smoke that comes with the mezcal. We need to, you know, what we need to do is we need to get the boys together. And just kind of all right. Next next show we do maybe, well. You know maybe on can, this show like fucking right here. I got yeah. the bar right there. We can we go to the well, liquor store. I will. I'll tell you what. I will make those cocktails before we'll get the liquor. We'll make the cocktails. We'll put them in uh, mason jars. We'll do some blind taste tests with them and everything. Yeah, that'd be maybe, fucking neat. Kind of just like like I said, up. I have. I'm not gonna I, tell you what's in it, but yeah, I know. have a full setup to have a, up to four people on the show. So sure. Actually, how many how many ports are on that soundboard? Uh, if you have a quarter inch jack, you can get uh, what eight looks yeah. like. So we have a total or, of I have two mics there, yeah. one mic here. Or nine? Yeah, nine. So nope, we have eight, eight, yeah. we have a total of one, two. We have like five or six. We have yeah. like five or six setup. 
So that's the cool thing about Youngblood Podcast, guys. And if you hear any background noise right now, I'm pretty sure that's from my computer. Oh, no, my fish tank light just turned back mm, on. Mm, mm. Oh. Mm. So, Matt, do me a favor. Uh, that was your first favorite cocktail. Right. Explain your second real quick. Let me go fix that. All right. Let's see. Um, why don't you just pause it? Just pause it. Jesus Christ, nice to get that fixed. Sorry, fish tank turned on, guys. We were talking with Matt Shredder. We're going to get back into this real quick like it never ended. We're talking about bot bartending tending bar as you like to call it um you were gonna tell me your second favorite cocktail while i was trying to fish fix the fish i have a fucking saltwater fish tank yeah i'm weird but we're gonna talk about his second favorite cocktail matt and then wrap it up oh, shit second favorite cocktail man i that's a tough one i i came up with the uh you know how i talked about jungle bird earlier jungle bird I made that's one. not that's not yours right no jungle bird's a classic okay. classic tiki cocktail i did a riff on it with um w with whiskey and a little bit of fernet in it as well that i was a really big fan of um not for everyone for fernet's kind of a minty uh bitter liqueur um, right but it it partied pretty hard man i, I was a big fan <laughs> it of that partied cocktail. pretty hard yeah i could drink that Consistently, that's probably my second favorite cocktail for sure. So, why do you not like the term mixologist? Uh, you know, it's it's one of those things where. Let's break it down like this: if you are working in a kitchen, you have to earn the title of chef, right? Okay. You, you know, feel like you chef, have chef that. has chef has some prestige along with it. Um, mixologist doesn't. And, you know, anyone okay. can call themselves a mixologist. And, and I just think that th there's not really any definition for the word. And a lot of people call themselves mixologists or call other people mixologists. And it doesn't, I, I just. I personally I, feel I, like you've earned that title, dude. Like you're, no, you're, no, you're no, good no. at what you do, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I do what I do. I've been doing it for a long time and I'm still able to do it. So that must mean I'm doing okay. But, um, I mean, to be a master mixologist or like run a bar I don't, I don't think I've earned that title. As there's, there's still so much to learn out there, and uh, I mean, I'm just doing what I do here in Boise, you right. know, and I'm, I'm very grateful for the fact that I can continue to do it. Uh, but I don't think that I've earned the title of mixologist. I think mixologist is someone uh, that really breaks down the composition of cocktails and like gets into it and uh, measures the amount of sugar in it right. and like versus um, acid, like the pH values of everything really like breaks it down i think someone like that you could call them a mixologist right I mean, i'm just I, i'm just a bartender you know you clearly have a lot of respect for the term mixologist and who you, who you would call that you know and who's who's the mixologist that when you when you think mixology who who's who do you think of there's a guy uh by the name of dave arnold uh he's been in the game for a really long time right probably one of the smartest bartenders out there uh he wrote a book called liquid intelligence that i read about six years ago right the first time and it blew me away i mean it, the stuff that was outlined in that book was incredible maybe it changed my view on uh, how i go about building cocktails and everything and right. that, that guy is a certified genius yeah. What do you know his Instagram handle off the top of your head? Uh, no, Dave. Dave Arnold is his <laughs> Dave name. Arnold. Just look him up. You'll find. Yeah, him. yeah. he's he's uh, he's very popular. Um, David Wondrich is another big name. Um, in Dave, the, Dave, Dave, Dave. Lots of Daves. <laughs> lots of Daves. Yeah. Lots and lots of Daves. Um, and uh, there's one. There's one more, but his name is eluding me right now. I can't. Uh, I can't How about for Boise? Like, if, if you were to name. Any mixologist in this in this town that you really think it holds the persona, the the title, the the name mixologist, who 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 would who would you consider? You know, there's there's a few uh, bartenders here that I have a lot of respect for. Right. Um, I mean, I respect a lot a lot of bartenders here in Boise. Actually. Right, of course, you but, but, respect but, them all. That's yeah, the I mean, but the the ones that uh, stand, stand out, out to me, um, uh, gentlemen that I had the pleasure of working with for a little while um, at Mai Tai. Uh, by the name of Jeremy Lawyer, uh, really kind of opened my eyes to cocktail creation and like uh, pushing the limits of what you could do with a drink and uh, what you know pushing the limits of what we see here in Boise too. Right. He's, he's ch changing the game, trying to change the game at that point. Um, he is incredible. I think he bartends at uh, Fork now. Okay. Um, 
Uh, another gentleman uh, no longer in the bar game, unfortunately, is a gentleman by the name of Kevin Baker. Okay. Uh, he's a barber at uh, Barber Divino now, actually, but he is a certified mad genius with cocktails. I mean, he has won so many cocktail competitions in his life, and he's a good friend of mine and uh, an absolute genius. Um, and, and just talking cocktails with him is always a pretty incredible experience. And uh, another person I really look up, look up to is uh, Tyler over at the Mode. Right, I mean, we already and, talked about yeah, him once yeah, on this. Yeah. And yeah. I think that guy's. Got I, fi- such I a figured cool, you were gonna bring him up. I, I was yeah. wondering. That guy's got such a cool grasp on uh, spirits and the things you can do with them, and, and uh, building cocktails. It's, I've competed against him in a couple of bartending competitions, and which uh, ones to be exact? Uh, the Fernet competition, the Fernet mm-hmm. cocktail competition. His cocktail was miles ahead of the rest of the pack. I mean, he he did some really incredible stuff in that competition, um, and I think. That might be the only competition. Actually, I guess that is the only competition I've competed against him directly. In. What about what about the one at Whiskey Bar? Uh, th- that you, is, did you that, compete? That, that is the one at Whiskey. That was it. Was at Whiskey. Yeah. That, what about the? Um, that was just a Fernet sponsored um, event at. Uh, remind me the bar where you got the. Oh, Preston Pony. Preston Pony. Yeah, yeah that, that, was, that, was, that, that was just a oh, Fernet yeah, sponsored. Sponsor Sorry, event. I was confusing the two. You know what? I think I did compete against Tyler in a competition that I don't remember entering. Um, oh, yeah. You were yeah. like, oh, I think I fucking was like second place. I didn't even know. Ooh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was for Tree Fort last year, and Tree Fort uh, had a um, – one of the brands of whiskey did a cocktail competition. Um, it was uh, High West Spirits out of Park City, and they did a competition – uh, have the bartenders around town come up with a cocktail during um, during Tree Fort, and then they would have secret shoppers come in and try it right. and judge it. And uh, one day I, I was at work, and my uh, then supervisor was like, "Hey, uh, you want to come down to uh, Press and Pony? They're doing the the High West event." And I'm like, yeah, "I mean, yeah, sure, why not? Let's go." I don't even know. I don't think I was working that day. I just happened to roll down there with them. And they were like, oh, yeah, and everyone's hanging out talking. Someone gets up and starts shouting. And is like, thanks, everyone, for supporting High West. And uh, now we're going to announce the winner of the cocktail competition. <laughs> and it's Matt Stretter from Whiskey. Hey, hey Stretter. Uh, and I was like, uh, what? Cool. <laughs> yeah, thanks. That's, that's pretty cool. And uh, I think Tyler was involved in that one, too. Um, right, right. But, uh, you know, Tyler <laughs> mopped the floor with us at the Fernet competition. It was pretty crazy. Really uh, I remember who who's homeboy with the uh, curly mustache. Oh, Eric Schweitzer. I actually actually he's another one I would add to that list. I have a lot of respect. Add over guy. present pony, right? Yeah. He's yeah. The, he he. Also, I can attest as a customer there too. That guy kicks ass. He's a fucking great bartender. You know, I think I think Eric's biggest strength is he's such a good conversationalist, and he really has elevated bartending. Uh, or being a barman to, uh, right. to an art, you know, it's it's really it is really cool to talk to him and sit around and talk shop. But right. watching him watching him interact with everyone else, it's it's uh, very artful. You know, he, he does a really whole, job. the whole thing. That's all yeah. it is. It's, yeah, it's, I think he's one of the man. like I mentioned earlier about there being different aspects of bartending, uh, be a craft bar, speed bar, you know, dive bar. Um, there and then there is a barman, someone who. Uh, is very really good at talking to guests and making them feel comfortable. Barman, wait, wait, explain it. What the, what's it? Oh, it's just another word for bartender. But like, a bar. Okay, a I barman. thought you were talking about somebody like who just does table touches and shit. Oh you know? no 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 no! Like just uh, he's he's just incredible at it. I mean, he's really good. Uh, he's a barman. I thought yeah, I, I was yeah. explaining the term barman. I'm sorry. Uh, I was. Yeah. Gonna... Yeah, he's, I was just, confused. he's just really good at what he does, you know. And uh, it's it's always fun to watch him, you know, behind the stick and. Yeah, we always have a good time when we hang out together. I'll visit his bar and we'll shoot. The he shit. came into Hey Penny a lot when I was working over there, and oh, yeah. he's always a good time. He's always a friendly person, and when I get drinks from him, I'm always impressed in every way. Yeah, we we had uh, dueling mustaches for a while. We worked actually, Eric and I worked together. <laughs> dueling mustaches uh, for a while. Very, uh, <laughs> we worked together at um, Mai Tai together. He he got me hired on there, and was uh, he the founder of the your mustache? No, I had this. No, I, no, 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 no. I had this going. Um, it was born out of laziness. I just didn't want to shave uh, at one point, and I just started growing out my mustache. I said fuck it, and then it got to a certain point. And I was like, all right, you know what? I'm gonna see how far I can take this, and just like started waxing it up and everything. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna see how and, far I can take this. Yeah, he said. <laughs> eventually, eventually uh, got pretty big, and then Eric got me hired on over at my tie, and. We were both behind the bar at the same time, two identical mustaches. It was a pretty stereotypical bartender. Uh, <laughs> that, that whole mustache, the, the curly look, not my mustache, it's Magnum P.I. shit, come on. Uh, the whole curly mustache look is, is very, uh, it's an elite 
guild of bartenders if you enter it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> if that's what you want to call thing. it. Oh, God damn it. I, I, I think it's funny. I mean, it's it's kind of a nostalgic thing to see behind the bar. People associate the, the curly mustache with, you know, the bartenders of the Old West and everything. And right. I, mean, I think it's 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 a interesting uh, part of the image, but... <laughs> it's true, though, man. Yeah, you, yeah, see somebody, I mean, you, you see somebody behind a bar that rocks a mustache like that, and you don't even think twice about it. Well, in, in Boise, where there, it's this town, it's a very small downtown, very uh, compact, and you got uh, bartenders that, you know, two very popular bars, you know, rocking the exact same stash. I can't tell you how many times... Dude, I remember this. I, I thought I was like, I texted yeah. you one night, and I was like, dude, I found your doppelganger. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> I'm like, yep, Eric, I know. Eric, yeah, Everyone, he works down there. Oh, and that was God. before I knew Eric, like, yeah. like more personally. Like, what we should try to do that would be kind of cool is, like, get you, Eric, Johnny from The Reef, um, Andy, all in a big show. That'd be kind of fun, yeah. Dude, that would be an int- That would be... The- very interesting yeah that'd be that'd be a good time you know and i would i would love to have any of you if you know you watch matt shredder i'm sure if you see his name on the show you might check it out he might send it to you but you know i'm not necessarily searching for guests or anything like that people are really excited to come on the show and um dude like a show like that would would be a lot of fun yeah do a bartender show you know make some drinks and shit who who would be the bartenders in your eyes that you would want to have on that show oh man um what are your names I mean, I kind of just listen. I, I'd like to see, I'd like to see uh, Schweitzer, Eric Schweitzer, on here. That'd be a lot of fun. He'd be a lot of fun to work next to again. Um, uh, let's see. I, I mean, I work really closely with Johnny on a pretty regular basis, and he's, <laughs> he's a lot of fun to uh, to bounce ideas off with, and, and you know, shoot the shit. He's, he's he is a lot of fun to uh, talk bar with, um, and. I, there, there's a lot of names, man. I know, I know most of the. Okay, if boys. you if if you could like name, I have like I said, it'd be better with two other guests. If oh. you could name two other people to come on the show with you, who'd you name? Oh fuck, I'd probably I'd probably for a, for for a bar attending specific podcast. Gotcha. Well, you know, for to make it fun, like not super, even super, fun, no, dude. No, like no, if I this mean, was, was a bar, thing, like, we could do a series of just that. Like I don't mind. Like I could do just for bartending. Yeah, or I could do I, if you would like. I mean, yeah, like I said, I would, I would probably, um, I would probably go with uh, Schweitzer, and uh, I mean, if you want to talk about whiskey, I mean, maybe even Chris Bailey from Whiskey Bar. Right. I, I worked there. I worked with him for about a year and a half, uh, almost two years, and I mean, between those guys, it'd be a lot of cool stuff coming up, and right. you know, like working with them, they're a lot of fun. So. Okay. Yeah. So they'd, they'd probably talk a lot of shit about me the, the entire <laughs> podcast, and uh, Bailey would love doing that. Right. But, uh, yeah, those are the guys that I'd, I'd probably pull on. Well, you guys, uh, you heard it here. You're invited on the Young Blood podcast with Matt Shredder for a bartending episode. You're welcome anytime. Um, I'm sure it'll be a good time, but please make sure you talk a lot of shit about Matt when you do it. No, they will. They won't even have, you don't even have to ask them. <laughs> I guarantee you. That's, I think well, that's, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to sure. employ you to do that. I'm going to employ you to do that. Say, Hey dude, um, we'll send this, we'll send this episode out once this goes on and, uh, get them on here, man. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. Get see, them on see here. See what we can do. You know, it's uh, a you know, Bailey would love nothing more than to sit around and talk shit about me on camera, and so. on camera where it's documented. <laughs> yeah. You can tell all kinds of stories about what Matt Strider's done, did, and been. Uh, I, don't <laughs> I, mean. I don't know if the world's ready for that. Dude, Matt Strider, can you believe we've been hitting an hour already? No, it sounds about right. Sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. Is there anything else you want to throw in this before we wrap it up, brother? I don't know, man. I mean, I'm excited for my uh, my bottle of whiskey at home. What kind of bottle of whiskey you got? I found some wild turkey uh, rare bird barrel proof the other day. Rare bird barrel proof. Yeah, it's uh, it's good. It's, it's a summer whiskey. The mustache is appropriated with the rare bird. You look like a rare bird. <laughs> <Do I? laughs> That's not what I was going for, but I'll take it. You, know? you look like a rare bird, my man. Well, the rare bird, Matt Schroeder, the man, the myth, the legend, the bartender, the mixologist, as he doesn't like to call himself, but I will say. <laughs> Guys, this has been Young Blood Podcast episode number 11 thank you so much for checking in thank you so much for being here hey, wait should we pay some bills before we take off i mean i do love treasure valley barbaco oh, yeah. treasure valley barbaco ladies and gentlemen treasure valley barbaco doesn't pay the bills but they do so i have to talk about them in a way that makes you want to love them and that way is go there and get a haircut check them out i'll tell you what it's not the cheapest haircut in town but it's the best it's also veteran owned operated and respected guys
best place to get a haircut. I also did the four there for CMY LLC. That's my company that I own, endorse, and operate. And we support local here at Young Blood Podcast. We also like our clothes. You know, again, if you want to look good, feel good, and also be economic about it, support the environment. You really, really need to check out Gem Spot Clothing. Colby Waddell endorses it. I endorse it. Matt endorses it. We love it to death. And guys, if you want to get 10% off, use promo code. It is E Clothing. E Clothing 18. E Clothing 18. See, I'm pretty quick at it, buddy. Yeah, I know. I, mean, I remembered. You did not remember. You had to look that up. You know why? Because I have a TBI, traumatic brain injury. <laughs> That's your get out of jail free card oh, for the rest of your life. Oh, you fucking know, man. It's great. Oh, hey, 10 tapes. The words, ten staples in your head, man. You get away with a few things. Hey, man, your, t- <laughs> your TBI is showing, dude. Hey, <laughs> your TBI right is showing, guys. It's been the Young Blood Podcast. Thanks for checking in. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for listening. We're out. Peace. And the names of Clayton Lyle, who child will be on another episode next week. Be recorded today. Check it out soon. Later, Peace. guys.